Hello, welcome to another segment. Today we're going to talk about something really, really important. Uh, from my last video, what I discussed with you folks was uh, that I had a dream, and in that dream, uh, a person was driving a car, and my wife and myself were in the car, and my wife uh, was uh, fatally killed in that accident. Now, what happened during that dream was where I literally went back to drinking, and, and that concerned me. Uh, because it was due to that stress uh, that that caused that drinking to happen again and that's why I wanted to go over particulars with you folks and reference how to deal with stress uh, other than going to back to your addiction or alcohol or drugs uh, substance abuse provides temporary relief for stress we all know that but the key word there is temporary and temporary means pretty much just it's not going to be around for, for a long time. It will go away. The um, uh, Whatever abuse that you did with the drugs or alcohol uh, for the meantime is feeling, making you feel good, but it will subside and it will disappear. So, substance abuse provides temporary uh, relief and that is why we need to avoid it totally because we want permanent relief. Now, we're not going to be uh, relief free from any tragedy from happening, but we need to learn how to deal with it. And there are many ways to deal with it, and we're going to go over some of them. So, let's start with what I choose, and I, actually I'm not the person I chose to call it this, but it was uh, during one of my studies that I found out what they call them is stressors, triggers of stress response. So they're called stressors. Now, anything that triggers the stress response is referred to as a stressor. The most common stressors include, number one, death of a loved one. That's going back to what the dream that I had. So, of course, you have a, a, a death of a loved one, and what we don't want you to do is to go into some kind of mode of drinking or drug abuse. So that's a stressor. Stressor two is conflicts of work or at home. In other words, if you have situations either at work or at home, that will be a stressor. A stressor, again, is where you're going to most likely run to uh, some sort of uh, substance abuse, whether it be drugs and or alcohol. So that is another one. Stressor number th three is illness. You get bad news from your doctor. You get bad news from whoever, or maybe about a loved one having bad news, medical bad news. Again, that will possibly make you run towards a bottle, make you run into the nightdress or drawer and, and pull out the cocaine, the crack, the marijuana. So that is stressor number three. Stressor number four is to overwork yourself. You need to work in a fashionable, slow-paced rhythm. Don't overwork yourself. There's a reason that we have eight-hour days, and it's not to make it a 24-hour day. So you need to slow down, step back, take a self-inventory, like I've said many a times before, and continue on a slower pace. So don't overwork yourself so you don't have that stressor coming up. Stressor number five is to poor time management. Don't try to do everything at the end or uh, leave everything towards the end because you need to pace yourself. If you have eight hours to do something, do a little bit each hour. Don't sit around for seven hours and then do everything in that eighth hour. Stressor number six, legal problems. You have marital issues. You have children issues. You're being dragged through child support court. You're being dragged through divorce court. Those are issues that will make you go back to substance abuse. Stay away from them. Don't deal with them. Or do deal with them, but don't deal with them in a matter where you're going to get temporary release, relief from substance abuse. Seven, major life changes changes such as changing house or job you know we all have to move we all have to get different employment it's how we deal with those changes in life 
Take each change as it comes, relax, think about it, make the best out of every change, but don't run to the bottle, don't run to the drugs. Stressors are very important that you utilize the best abilities that you have to, to conquer them without going back to drugs and alcohol. Stressor number eight, relationship breakdown. I don't care who you are, whoever you're watching, I don't care who you are, we've all had a relationship, whether it being a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife, break down one time in our life or another. It does happen. Of course we get all upset and of course we break down and of course we look for that temporary relief and that temporary relief is alcohol, is drugs, but it's not the answer for this stressor. You need to find other ways of dealing with stress and we will talk about that in a, in a short period of time. Stressor number nine, unhealthy habits such, such as substance abuse. That's what we're talking about. Unhealthy is drinking. Unhealthy is smoking. Unhealthy is snorting or, or smoking marijuana. Those are all unhappy uh, stressors and, and, and uh, they're unhappy, I mean unhealthy habits. We don't need to deal with all of them. So you need to eliminate them, throw them out the door and welcome new items into your life, new ways of dealing with your stress. So we talked about these stressors and, and the different things that are uh, out there that we need to watch out for. The dangers of using alcohol and drugs and deal with stress. It can lead to addiction. Now, if you already have an addiction, it could lead to a relapse if you're sober. If you're not sober, it continuously will lead to more addiction further and further, deeper and deeper. Uh, but I am hoping that if you're watching, you are sober. But don't let these stressful events from tragedies, misfortunes in life make you relapse or get you further into your addiction. Substance abuse increases the amount of stress in people's lives. It doesn't relieve the stress. It relieves it temporarily. It will increase. Because now, besides all the stress that you have around you, now you're adding more stress with the substance abuse. Because now, you have the alcoholism, you have the drug addiction. So your little bit of stress, mountains of little stress, is actually becoming bigger mountains with all the extra abuse. Symptoms of stress. Sometimes people can be stressed not even realize that they're stressed. And that's the truth. You might not even know that you are stressed out, but these are uh, symptoms that you will be able to tell. The inability to sleep. I found myself a lot in the middle of the night to wake up for no particular reason. Of course, now, since June, 13, uh, June 22nd, 2013, I wake up a lot because my job requires me to communicate with uh, India and China on a regular basis. However, during my addiction years of doing massive amount of alcohol, I found myself waking up for bathroom runs, for nauseousness, uh, from my brain cells, from all that alcohol just working on overtime. So that is a, a, a sure sign. Inabilities to sleep, loss of appetite. Let me tell you folks something. When I was drinking so much vodka, and sucking it down with soda, I hardly ever ate. And people around me were wondering, well, how is he actually lived when not eating? The ones most closely that watched me, like my wife, knew what my substitution was, and that was vodka. People that didn't know me that well just thought, hey, this guy really uh, wants to diet down. But here's the thing, I wasn't losing weight, because unwanted calories, which we talked about yesterday, of uh, alcohol shots or beer or whatever else at 150 calories per shot at 10 shots a day that's 1500 unwanted calories that's probably two or three Big Macs think about that so loss of appetite is another sign headaches why do you think you might have headaches It's because of all those drugs all that alcohol in your system is just working away at not only your head but also at your heart. 
those two combinations put together is, is a sure sign of a downfall and possible death. Feeling antsy, shaky. You ever see anybody that's doing uh, crack or cocaine, how they move around a lot, and um, they, they all antsy and shaky? Well, that is a sure sign. Somebody that cannot sit still, like I'm doing right now and conversating, uh, having a conversation with you, that is a sign that I am relaxed, I am not under the influence. However, if I was doing this while doing a couple shots of vodka, I'd be like this, all over the place, and you'd be finding it hard to keep up with my movements. So that's another sign. Indigestion. Your stomach is totally upset no matter what you eat, no matter what you take in, other than what you have already that made it this way, is not staying in. Sure sign. Another reason to be careful. Stomach discomfort. Butterflies in the stomach. Nervousness. No matter what people talk to you about, you're nervous. You second guess everything. Uh, life is as a conspiracy as we know it because we are not in our straight state of mind and we just assume everything is against us and everyone is. Easily upset. I used to get upset over the dumbest little things. It could be as simple as a grandchild just getting in my way during TV or uh, the dog barking the wrong way. Easily upset is a sure sign that somebody either has a couple of problems. It could be just a medical reason and then it could be the most likely reason it's drugs and alcohol. So be careful with that. Inability to concentrate. Eye contact during a conversation is so important that when somebody's talking to you and they're going like this and talking to you, that is an inability to concentrate. That is because their movements is not being uh, uh, taken directly from the brain to, to doing what they have to do because their brain is intoxicated by alcohol and or drugs. Anxiety. You know, let's get going. Come on, we got to go. We got to look at the time. We got to go. Uh, I used to be very anxious to come home with my wife in the car after we went out shopping or some, and to tell my wife, you know what, let me go and walk the dog, or do you need something from down the street where I can just walk down there, just to get my fix of, uh, of vodka or beer. That was an anxiety on my part to get my fill, because I thought that as soon as I would have some alcohol in me, I'd be a happier person, but I really wasn't. I really wasn't. I might have been temporary. That's the temporary relief we spoke about. Lack of energy. My drinking would make me so tired, like we spoke about in previous videos, that I would have to take, when I was home, take naps in the afternoon. I would have to relax. I would have to sleep it off, is what they say. Sleep off the, the drugs and alcohol. It's your best cure. No, your best cure is not to do it. Not to do it at all. That's your best cure. A lot of negative thinking. Now there are two, uh, two types of people. There are, there's one type of person in life that you'll run into that no matter what you say, they're going to find some negative answer for you. That's not to say that they're drinking or doing drugs. That's just to say that they're just negative people. But alcohol and drugs will give you negative thoughts. Like I said previously, it everything becomes a conspiracy everybody's against you everybody's looking at you but guess what you're feeling that way because you know deep down inside that what you consumed whether it went down your throat up your nose or puffed through your mouth that you shouldn't have done that that you should not be doing that because it is hurtful for you and it's hurtful for your loved ones so think about what i just said and today august 2nd 2014 let today be the best day for the rest of your life let a sober today make a better tomorrow another one is evidence of ineffective immune system you're constantly getting sick constantly have a cold constantly sniffling there's always the same sickness coming around because your immune system has no defense because your blood is holding so much alcohol is holding drugs in them that all the cells can't build up fast enough as fast as you're consuming these items. So stop. 
loss of interest in sex. Big one. Now, you might think right now that when you drink or you do addiction uh, or you do drugs that your sex life is great, but again, it's a temporary thing. You will lose the sex drive from drugs and alcohol. It's only normal because your muscles are not functioning. Your brain is not functioning properly. And God knows what else might be going on. So that's another sign. Feeling of frustration. You're frustrated because a couple things. But the first thing is you're frustrated is because you can't believe that you let your life get so bad to live your life with drugs and alcohol. But you're also frustrated because people are pointing it out to you. They're saying, hey, Ralph, what's up with all this drinking? Or they might be going behind your back and going to your loved one, to your wife, your husband, whatever, and say, you know, we think Ralph is really drinking a lot. You want to eliminate the frustration, eliminate the drugs and alcohol. That is as simple as that. Now, before I go into the last phase, I want to give you my contact information. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. You can find me at Ralph.Friedrichs at Yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. You can go to my website, which incidentally, my website has all my videos on it, articles, pictures, a couple games. These articles and pictures and videos, other than my own videos, were all created by either a doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist. They are the people that are dispensing medical advice and medical treatments to people like you. It is not me. I take their information and I pass it on to you so you can educate yourself on how to deal with addiction, how to work with recovery. Those are all the things that you want to do. So my website is www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Also, if you go on Facebook, you can find my, my page there, which is clearviews.info. You can call my job number, my work number, which is a home job, and nobody uses that phone other than me, 844-393-9355. So you have all these different ways to contact me, effective ways to deal with uh, stress, uh, and, and one ineffective way to deal with it is with uh, alcohol and or drugs. So effective way to deal with relaxation techniques learn yoga meditate those are all ways to calm your mind calm your body relax that is a one way exercise is another good way go jogging do some pull up pull ups sit ups do some whatever exercise that you can think of that is another way of dealing with the stress exercise is very important anyway whether you're stressful or not it keeps us in shape it keeps our heart going now, if you don't want your heart to, to work as good and you don't want your mind to work as good, then addiction is for you. Then alcohol is for you. But if you want to live, you want to be around your loved ones, you want to have a happy, healthy life, get rid of the drugs, get rid of the alcohol. And I hope right now, if you're watching, you're not doing drugs and alcohol, I would hope that you're putting it down for this segment. Another thing is listening to music. I don't know if you folks have noticed that every video that I do, I have some sort of background music, and it's usually easy listening because it's easy on the mind, and it's also easy for you to listen to while you're listening to me. So listening to music, spending time engaged, uh, looking at maybe nice slow movies, the romance movies, document documentaries, things as such is also good. It's a good stress reliever. It brings down you and that's good. Getting away for a few days can help people charge up their batteries. We talked about this in a previous video. There are a lot of people out there that just don't have money. Although I don't want to bring up the money because I, uh, during my study today, I came across something. How is it that you or me don't mind going into a bar and spending five to ten dollars on a glass of some sort of liquor but we cry and scream over the price of a gallon of milk or a dozen of eggs. Think about that. Where does our priorities lie 
that we don't mind spending all that money on drugs, all that money on alcohol, and, and we do mind spending it on essential items such as milk and eggs. So that's why I brought that up. So getting away is important. Camping is very inexpensive. A road trip, sightseeing, uh, for you Long Islanders, going out east is very inexpensive. Uh, people down in Florida, you have all of Florida to go driving around with. For my friend up in New York, uh, New York, I'm sorry, incidentally, uh, my friend up north, I should have said, not in New York. For my friend up north, and you know who you are, I want to also congratulate you. This is now starting your third weekend. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you and continue on the path. Continue doing what you're doing. And do not overwork yourself. I've said this many times and I'm going to say it over and over again. Do not overwork yourself. Congratulations. Keep it up. You and I do talk quite often so we will continuously do that. Let's get back to the, uh, the issue at hand. Keeping a journal. Now there are many ways of keeping a journal. My journals are my videos and my homework. Believe it or not, everything that I talk about on my videos does not come from my head. It comes from me studying different Google items, uh, Google areas, uh, studying in possibly hospital uh, articles and, uh, and things. So I do keep everything that I talk about and I do put it away on my laptop somewhere so I can back reference to a, a later date. So a journal would be doing it like I do, videos. Another way to do a journal is to literally, like you remember growing up with a little diary, keep a journal that way. But keeping journals provides an opportunity to vent out stressors. You remember the stressors we spoke about in the beginning. The stressors are death of a loved one. I'm going to read these real quick, so I'm going to look over there. Death of a loved one, conflicts at work at home, illness, overworking yourself, poor time management, legal problems. Uh, major life changes. These are stressors. So keeping a journal and putting down your stressors does help. Talking about problems to other people is another good way to reduce your stress. Talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. You know, they, your husband and your wife, are with you through good and bad. And your bad, if they're still with you during your bad, can you imagine by listening to you during your good? In other words, you want to talk to them. You want to tell them how you're recovery is going, how every day is becoming better. They do want to hear that because they've already seen the worst of you. Talk to your parents. Even if you're not a child, you can still talk to your parents. Remember, you're always your parents' children. So talk to your parents. Talk to a lot of different people. If people continue to struggle with chronic stress, it is advisable that they seek advice from a hospital or a therapist. And I do it I do recommend that because watching my videos only gives you that stepping stone. From here on, it is up to you to do something about it. Stressors are definitely no good with alcohol and or drugs, period. So now let's go back to what we usually talk about and that's in, and then the reason I want to talk about it again is because there is, I'm sure, someone watching that hasn't seen me before. There are different methods to battle addiction. Method number one is my own method. And that method pretty easily is summed up this way. You're watching my video. My videos expresses my feelings towards addiction, expresses my feelings on recovery. It expresses those feelings to you. These are my journals. I work with this every single day. I work with my website every single day at www.clearviews.info and I work with my Facebook page, clearviews.info. Now, for anyone that doesn't know what clear views means, it is community, lessons, empower, addiction, recovery, views. So it's the community, us all working together. And it's our lessons from the past that empower us to recover from addiction. So it's all of us working together. So these are my methods. Then, as I previously, previously said, you have AA. AA is a huge organization and have huge results. Every method that is out there is workable, but you are the one that has to work with it. 
In other words, if you go into AA and you just don't feel comfortable, which I didn't, then find your own way of battling addiction. Because at the end of the day, it is the end result, not how you got there, but the end result, and that is to be living and working through addiction. That is your end result. So it doesn't matter how you get there, but it matters that you get there. But if you are going to something that you cannot totally deal with anyway, or you don't like something about it, then you need to find a different solution. Now, if you are a weaker type of person in the mind as far as not trusting yourself, and when I say that, I mean if you walk, if you walk past a liquor shop, if you walk past a store, or you walk through a town and you see an extra, not an extra deal, a drug dealer that you used to buy drugs from, and you don't trust yourself and you're afraid that you might have a relapse and buy or go to the store and buy liquor or something, then you need to check into 30, 60, 90 day rehab center in your local area. Now, on page 7 on my webpage, www.clearviews.info, page 7 has all the states listed. Click on your state and hopefully within your area you'll find one of the treatment centers. However, if you don't find one there, just Google your area, uh, first Google treatment centers in your area, then you should be able to find one. So those are three methods. Now there are other methods you can go, which I truly recommend, to a higher power. Remember, God created all of us. He created us to be just the way we are. It is what we took from God, which is a perfect creation, and tried to remold it in a different fashion. Remolding it such as being addicted to drugs and or alcohol. Remolding it in any other fashion. But that's not the way God created you. So if you seek God with what you ended up now because of your own actions, if you seek God, God will guide you to recreate what he has already created that you changed. God will accept the fact that you thought you could do better than he has. He'll accept that and recreate you. So that's another way. Go to the higher power. Ask God to help you. You can go to other local places like Knights of Columbus and YMCA's. They would also help you. So now we have all that said and done. You have my method, you have AA, you have the treatment centers, you have all these other avenues to go to. Now it's up to you to go out and find them. It's up to you to go out and seek these places. And it is up to you to make it work. It is up to me to help you by providing you with information constantly and hopefully daily. So I will continuously do that, but I cannot see you. I cannot help you if you don't reach out to me. 631-599-0218 is one way you can help, uh, reach out to me and I can certainly help you then. But you need to reach out to me because you folks all know who I am. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I create these videos for you because when I help you, I am helping me. I truly am helping me by helping you. And the way that works is that by me sitting in front of this video camera, by me talking to you about addiction and how to watch out for certain things and how to deal with stress, how to deal with relapses, I am constantly reminding my own self that I do also have a problem. I might be sober since, I am sober since June 22nd, 2013, but I still am addicted. I am addicted to alcohol. The only difference that I have from now, from June 21st, of, which is a day before my sobriety of last year, is that I have learned to live and work with my addiction. That's all it really comes down to is you need to learn to work and live with it. You are not going to eliminate your addiction. That addiction will always be with you. You cannot eliminate it. But you can learn how to live with it. You can learn how to cope with it. It's all in your mind. So if you have a strong mind and a will to be a, a healthier person and, and eliminate addictions, work with it. Reach out to me. Reach out to AA. Check yourself into a rehab center. But do one of those things and you will find positive results. And with those results come certain benefits. 
healthier life, a stable life. Hopefully, if uh, you lost a relationship or were rocky during your addiction, your relationship becomes stronger. People that were a little worried about you will come back to you now and, and work with you. So those are all different things that you have something to look forward to. So I urge you all to please watch all my videos. They're all on www.clearviews.info and pay attention to everything I say on these videos. I thank everybody very much for coming by again. I hope to see everybody real soon. A sober day, uh, excuse me, a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And please, if you believe it here, you can achieve it. Believe it here, achieve it there. That's the way you have to think. So please, everybody, have a great day. Have a pleasant weekend. But more importantly, have a sober weekend. God bless you.